Previously on Dungeons Against Humanity. The Crown Prince has been kidnapped. Eight years ago, after a fire killed the original Crown Prince, Tobin the Knight, the King's wife, her name was Salima Mahat. The pirate captain, her name is Deadeye. This is the Red Dawn, Quartermaster, Fato. Uh, an argument between Fato and Deadeye. I'm making a challenge for captaincy. Deadeye, and there's mm. something in her hand that is glowing with a faint bluish light. Something is rising up out of the ocean. Two. One might call okay. a dreadnought. If that thing catches us, we're dead. All of us. Unless we turn east now and head through the Daring Straits. Do I have any input as far as Warforge? This one prison guard introduced himself as Solkin Rai. The dreadnought is drawing into range. I'm down. You have to get this to Hysaia. It is a glowing crystal. Run up to Hysaia. Mm. Greetings from Deadeye. And I smash the crystal on the neck. You remember your real name, not Hysaia al Jalani. Your name, Salima Mahat. You are the queen of Kisuar. The king has been using necromancy to suck dry the life of his own children in order to keep himself alive. Help me and I'll help you. Help you do what exactly? Regicide, obviously. All right, so last episode, we fought a giant dreadnought. Thario was killed and thrown overboard by- Shut up, a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> what a twist. Yes, uh-huh. and Matt has transmogrified into <laughs> Sulkin Rai, who was an acquaintance of Elohim's from prison. You where the big house. What's up, buddy? La la la. And the prison gang of two <laughs> came taps and everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hysaia was revealed as the queen of Kisuar. Holy um, shit! Yeah, <laughs> as Salima. See? Yeah, Salima <laughs> Elifar. And apparently, have children. Yes, wow. you have three children. Oh, Do you know God. where your children are? <laughs> well, now I know why I pee when I sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> Demetria remained Dimitri. Yeah. <laughs> the unchanging. Dimitri the unchanging. Um, I'm still the same character. The immutable Dimitri. It's gotta be like the Rosencrantz and Guildenstern of the oh, whole God. story. We'll constantly shift between different characters, but it's just Dimitri. Yes. <laughs> it's the point of view character. Yeah. 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 Pretty much. The Red Dawn took a hell of a lot of damage in the fight, but did, Swiss cheese now. is currently limping into Krishnar Bay. You have reached Tudavak. Yay! Woo! Tudavak is a frozen wasteland. Oh. Oh. But it could have been a lot worse. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> there are towering cliffs of ice, the strong wind that seems to cut through whatever clothing you're wearing. I think everybody's pretty much beaten up at this point. About a fourth of the crew was lost in the fight. Leroy's okay, though. Leroy is okay. Uh, there's a lot of blood and uh, some bodies on gears. the deck. Gears. There's a lot of gears from uh, Fallen Warforged. There is a Warforged on your deck. You just met with Deadeye in the captain's quarters. Yes. You had a long conversation in there. And you exit that. Sulkin Rai steps out on the deck and several... Yeah. Several crew members immediately jump to attention and point weapons at him. Uh, Elohim's gonna run out in front of... Soul with my arms spread, be like, it's it, the eyes, guys. He's on our side. Kashka looks at you and says, This one, you, he, its eyes look different. He, Why? He helps me break out. Hello, yeah. world. You are on our side? I am helping. I mean, okay. he's not on fire and he just walked out of the captain's quarters. So that's a pretty glowing recommendation on the captain's part. Uh, the captain in question does walk out behind Soul at this time and kind of nods to Kashka and says, as you were. It's all right. Fato is moving around on the main deck. She is pretty beat up from the fight, and she is healing people left and right and casting mending. She moves her way down the entire length of the deck. How many spell slots does she have? I wish I had healing and could help. Mending, fortunately, is a cantrip, oh, so uh, she can do that. Yeah, it pays to have a cleric on yeah. board of a ship. Yeah. <laughs> The Fato is moving down the deck, casting spells and mending the ship with cantrips, and she is murmuring as she goes talking to people, checking to see how they are, and being like, yeah, okay, okay, yeah, I, I see you, I see you, you're on the list, give me a minute, I'm over here, 
and checking in and seeing if there is anyone below decks. Um, but she does gradually move her way back to the back of the ship and she stands in front of the party and Deadeye. And Deadeye kind of watches her come warily. Fata looks at all of you and says, Well, did you have your secret meeting yet? I guess I wasn't invited. Did you feel like you should be? The quartermaster of this fucking ship. And before we leave Krishnar, and she makes eye contact with Deadeye, I'm going to be the fucking captain of this ship. So yeah, you might want to start making friends with me. And she turns and continues mending the ship. <laughs> Elohim's just examining their cuticles. I think Demetria is like awkwardly looking off to one side. And... <laughs> After she leaves, Elohim's just like, I mean, I'm not the one who casts Gust of Wind and knocked half the crew out of the rigging. I think like Fato stops a few feet away. Her warhammer sparks a little bit, keeps walking. There seems to be a dwarf. She's my cousin. I can be mean. There's a uh, there's a dwarf that is trailing after her, who is just fucking like glaring daggers at the party and Deadeye, but especially Deadeye. You limp into Krishnar Bay. The second that you enter the bay, you see a very large elven ship and two consorts. Do I recognize this ship? Roll history. Ooh, look at that. Oh, that was a nat one. You look at it and it's almost as if your mind is like, nope, nope, that's not here. Nope, nope. I'm ignoring it. Yeah. I probably see it and I'm just like, oh, hey, you know what? Did I leave the stove on? <laughs> <laughs> Beyond the elven ship and the bay, which seems pretty much occupied, other than the, sh- the elven ship, pretty much occupied Look by... At that. The bay's empty. <laughs> <laughs> by ships that are obviously pirate. You can see the black flags with different insignias. A few of them hail the Red Dawn uh, in greeting, seem to look concerned. Beyond the bay itself, uh, you see the settlement of Krishnar. It's very Viking-esque. It's perched on the edge of the frozen tundra, sort of clinging to the side of this frozen continent. The skies are completely gray, unnaturally gray. It was uh, fairly warm uh, and sunny uh, when you were passing through the straits earlier, but the closer you got to Tudovac, the thicker the cloud cover got until it is just simply gray now. So it's like Portland. <laughs> Basically. Krishnar uh, has winding streets, uh, tiered roofs, and at the very top of the hillside, uh, you can see a longhouse. These uh, settlement uh, dwellings are thatched roofs and mud and stone. Doesn't seem like they have uh, much in the way of refinement here. Uh, the only refinement that you can see or seems to be in the eaves of the houses. There are sharpened decorations. From the top of the longhouse flies a single flag. It is a gray dragon in a field of white. Very stylized, curly-cued, very Viking-esque. Deadeye gestures the party uh, into longboats. When Silken Rice steps into the <laughs> longboat, the, the, it dips significantly. Deadeye looks at you and says to Kashka, Better send word ahead to make sure no one takes a shot at this one. And she turns to Silken Rice and she says, Fortunately, you're not the first of the Warforged to make their way to this place. If you get a chance, you might visit the Woven Silk Emporium. You'll find one of your own kind there, such as he is. This one is very curious to find out what you mean. Uh, You look ahead to shore. There's a contingent of elves and a contingent of half-orcs waiting for you. They seem to be eyeing each other very warily and keeping hands near their weapons. Philip just kind of pulls the hood of their cloak a little lower. Yeah. Did I... Take my ears to my head. (laughs) (laughs) Do you turn into Carmella? Yes. Yes, I do. Okay. (laughs) Duct tape. Just wish you were somebody else. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait. I am. (laughs) You uh, uh, come to shore and uh, disembark. The half-orc contingent uh, immediately closes in on Salima uh, and Deadeye. And uh, one of the half-orcs steps forward and puts a hand to his chest and kind of warily bows to Salima and says, uh, Welcome. Uh, We are told you are coming. The Earl will see you. Captain, you will follow me. Did we send word ahead? They saw you coming. I know, but like, does anyone else know that she's... 
Fancy. Fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Are you asking the half works this? Do you well, know like... she's fancy? <laughs> <laughs> Ask this in character. Who would know? Kashka's with you. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to kind of open Kashka and be like, how do they know? Kashka's going to look at you and then take a step back and point at the elves. <laughs> at that point, the elves <laughs> part to reveal Sir Lely Germach, your father, <laughs> who is looking directly at you and does not appear to be... Stab me in the eye with a fork. <laughs> and does not appear to be confused at all as to who you are. And in fact, he proceeds to ignore all of the people around him holding the hilts of their weapons and flounces over to you and says, Well, do you have anything to say for yourself? Do you have any idea how much trouble you have put me through? Oh, I put you through a little bit of trouble? I'm sorry that I didn't stay in the hole you sent me in to die. How do you think you got out of that hole? I had to bribe this one who bribed this one, and he points at Salima and then at Sulkin Rai, to get you out! I wasn't going to leave my blood, my blood! Oh, so it wasn't me Ugh. you were worried about, it was your genetic material. Always with a smart tongue, with no thought to your own well-being, to no thought to your own survival! I clearly got the fast tongue from my mother. And he narrows his eyes at you and says, You! have much to answer for. Saul so starts walking. <laughs> un, un, unaware of, like, uh, organic social practices, walks directly between them forward very slowly. <laughs> Just as conversation awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Dimitri's gonna take a few steps back and look in the other direction. The, the half-orcs do at this point kind of cautiously surround the whole group and make gestures and noises as to follow them now, please. Carmela's just gonna flip her hair over her shoulder and follow. Uh, noises, what are they, grunting at each other? <laughs> 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 well, do you speak orcish? <laughs> nope. Then it probably does sound like grunts to you. Oh, I speak orcish. Yeah, you do. What do they say? They're saying, follow us, please. <laughs> Come on. What a mystery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank um, God you understood that. I will say, come on. Yeah, you do hear uh, Sir Lely Guillermach muttering uh, loudly as he goes along, disguise as a human of all things, all filthy things. I can believe the disgrace. Wow, rude. Yeah. Well, I'm right here. Stop <laughs> for a second and kind of cover her nose and then uh, just sneeze on him. <laughs> Gently. So you are um, brought up to the longhouse. The elves are diverted off into a different direction. It seems like the elves are kind of under guard. Uh, They are shuttled off into a different part of the longhouse. Uh, You guys and Deadeye are brought into the main hall of the longhouse. There are many different long tables here. Um, This is obviously a meeting grounds, but uh, also a place where people can come to be heard by the Earl. The Earl in question sits on her chair uh, at the end of the uh, longhouse, uh, flanked by two advisors. She's an eight-year-old girl. Earl the girl. The Earl girl. She sits very imperiously on her throne and gestures at you to come forward. Uh, Are there any uh, portraits of her hanging around? Is there a mural of the Earl girl? (laughs) No, there isn't. There is no mural of the Earl girl. She is wearing a, a tunic that is emblazoned with the gray dragon. She nods to Deadeye first and says, Oh God, I have to do a, a little girl voice, but I have to do a little girl voice with Russian. I have to do a little girl voice with Russian. Hail, Captain Deadeye. Welcome. You are, I see, in need again. Uh, and Deadeye says, We are. Your Grace, we had a hell of a fight with a dreadnought. The little girl's eyes kind of widen, but she gives no other uh, indication of surprise. And Deadeye continues, We fought a dreadnought through the Daring Straits, and you know on what mission we have come. Are they here? And the Earl, her eyes slide over to Salima, and she says, We have never met Salima Elathar, but I believe that you have met my brother. 
when he was sentenced by your husband with exile. Do you remember this? I remember many deplorable days, standing beside my husband, regretting all of the things that he has been doing. I hope that together we can put an end to these acts, for good. And she nods, and she says, Your sons, they are here. You will be taken to see them, but your daughter, Roxana, the princess, we were unable to secure her. Why not? She has been taken, they say, to Sarawar. It is strange that the king would do so. And she looks at Deadeye and she says, I can only guess what his intentions are, as I am sure you can as well. You have both put me in a very difficult position. You must understand, my first obligation is to the people of this settlement, is to the people of Tudavak. They know that you are here. They know that you remember. And so, I give you the best I can. Two days. Two days to convince me that you can do what you say and put an end to this. If in two days you cannot, then I must turn you over to the crown to save my own people. You understand? I understand why you would feel compelled, but I do urge you to consider that that crown has not been good to Tudovac for a very long time. And she says, that is why I give you two days. And Deadeye is sort of standing there hanging her head. And she kind of nods to herself a little bit. Doesn't say anything. Just turns and is uh, stepping away. A guard gestures to Salima and uh, takes you into a side chamber. And your sons are there. And you remember them. You remember the day that they were both born. You remember holding them as children. It, it's kind of all jumbled in your head. It's like all of these memories coming at you so fast, like flashes on a screen. They look at you and they see a mask. They see a woman in a mask covered in scarves. Rayamod looks about the same. He's 17, red-haired, good-looking kid. Tobin. Tobin, the former crown prince, the older, the one who was supposed to be the sacrificial lamb to his father, to be sucked dry and have his father take his place. They started the process with him. He looks old. He looks far older than he should. He's 26, 27? He looks like he's 50. And he stands up and seems to have a little bit of difficulty uh, doing so, and he stares at you and then fumbles for a piece of, of parchment on which he scribbles a quick message. It seems like he can't talk. And he turns it around and you see mother written on it. Mother, Raymond says. Hello, Grumplings. I like bouncing away from that scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Such a good choice of word. <laughs> Grumplings. <laughs> They're like dumplings, but a little bit gritty. <laughs> no grumpy. My little grumpy dumplings who yeah. cried when in their cribs and all of that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm grumbling. <laughs> I'm not so grumbling. <laughs> and where are the game grumblings? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dimitri, Ella Very Ella, Leroy, and Sulkin Rai are invited, invited, quote unquote, right. to sleep in a yurt just outside of the um, city walls. How insulated is this yurt? Very insulated. Yeah, this is not obviously... That I, not that I doubt their architecture. <laughs> I'm alarmed by the choice of... You're like, how much consideration am I getting? Is yeah. Question. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're comfortable. Okay. Well, not comfortable, but, you know, you're warm. Let's Com put it that way. Comfortable for Krishnar. Oh, yeah. Animal Very. skins aplenty. Salima and her sons sleep in the longhouse in chambers that are obviously intended for visiting chieftains or royalty, although royalty hasn't really come to... Krishna or any time recently. There is some conversation between Salima and her sons. Rayamad is absolutely wanting to rescue Roxana, but he's very adamant about, I, I know everything that's happened and I don't, and he puts a hand on Tobin's shoulder and uh, I don't disbelieve anything that you guys are saying. I just, I can't believe 
Papa would do this. I feel like he must have some kind of bad advisors or someone forcing him to do this. I, I feel like we just need to talk to him. Too many centuries and too much fear has changed him into what we have now. He meant well, but you can see what's happened. You can see what he did to your brother. And Raymond looks at Tobin and kind of winces and, and says, yeah, I see that. It's just, what is he going to do to Roxana? Is he going to do this? He believes he has to. Tobin looks agitated and sort of scribbles out a longer message and then um, shows it to you and he says, I have been to Sarawar. I have seen the floating isle. There is no coming back from that. I grieve for my sister, but please do not go. I have just found you again. Please do not go. Off screen tears. <laughs> <laughs> we brought you back. I've been there and back again. And your sister is coming back. We're not leaving anyone to empower this man anymore. The rest of you are uh, awakened by half orc guards. You are uh, brought into. You have your hit points back? Yes, you have uh, oh, your yeah. hit points back. And spell slot. Yeah. So this was a long rest? This was a long rest, yes. And what P.S. What time of day do they wake us up? Like, is this early morning? This is early morning. Like, as soon as it's daylight, they do not waste a second of daylight. <laughs> if there's okay, so any what day. time is daylight? It's a very weak, weak, weak daylight, so you can't really even tell. What um, level should I be right now? I uh, you should be... 20. Yeah, you're at level 8 or 9. Okay, nine I think you're at level... Right. Yeah. No, no, no you're I, I think it would be 8. With eight. some monk now, I think. Three levels of monk, I yeah. think, was what gotcha you... Gotcha memories back. Yeah. yeah. The three of you, Ella Very Ella, Sulkin Rai, and Dimitri, are at level 6. You oh. go from 3 to 6. Everyone gained a bunch of levels, Ooh. but she gained a lot more levels. Yeah. So you are brought to the Longhouse. They say that uh, Deadeye has requested the presence of Dimitri. Me? Mm-hmm. Um, Sulkin Rai and Ella Very Ella, Kashka turns to you and says, Would you like to see town? Um, I have been asked by Deadeye, and she gestures to Sulkin Rai, to accompany you at all times and make sure that, that, that no one harms you, and that it is understood that you are helping. This one appreciates your assistance in this matter. Perhaps we can go to the location that was prescribed to this one. Ah, oh, yeah! Her face actually lights up. She's... It looks like she needed that long rest herself yesterday yeah. because she was pretty beat up, but her face suddenly lights up and she says, Ah, yeah, yeah, we go see uh, Waywalket. We, we, we see Waywalket. Can I roll to see if I remember anything back From, here? Was I in Krishna before? You weren't, or was I... you weren't in Krishna. Okay. You were in Carrick. Ah. Yeah. Waywalket, is this the one that is of Warforge? Uh, no, no. Is Bart. You, I, I, I will come. Come. I will take you there. Um, she takes the two of you down into the city. Gratitude. <laughs> <laughs> well, bye. Yeah. As soon as you get taken away and I'm, like, left alone about to be taken to the pirate captain. <laughs> Um, you do see many elves uh, in the long hall as you pass through it. It seems like they're in fierce debate with each other. They seem... Um, mm very anxious. Sir Lele Giermach is in the middle of it, speaking in Elvish, and seems very high-strung. Isn't he always? So, you are uh, brought to Deadeye at about the same time that Salima is. Deadeye also looked like she needed the long rest. That, Where uh, is Deadeye? It seems like she has come in from uh, someplace else in the city as well, and has met you here. That she uh, is leaning against an upper floor of the longhouse uh, that is looking out over the city, um, specifically looking out into the bay and keeping her eyes on her ship, which is slowly being, you know, there's a mast being hoisted up and being floated up actually, mm. uh, and put back in place, and the sails are being mended. This was a strategy game. She could see the progress bar slowly rising. <laughs> Construction noises in the distance. Yeah. Idle pirates. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she turns to greet both of you. She has a folded up piece of paper that's slightly crumpled, and she nods to both of you, and then she hands you the crumpled up piece of paper, and she says, 
Your magic user, I'd appreciate it if you would have a look at this and see if you can tell me what your thoughts are. Uh, Dimitri froze his brow and then looks down at the note. The note is as follows. My name is Tobin. I was named Crown Prince at my birth and called Tobin the Ninth, but this is a lie. There haven't been eight Tobins before me. There's only been one who sat on the throne and seven thrown to the grave. On my 17th birthday, I was to ascend and take my father's place, but instead I was taken to Sadawar and imprisoned. They speak of Sadawar as a floating paradise, but death and darkness permeates this place. There are foul priests who lurk in the hallways, rats and insects trailing in the shadow of their robes, necromancers of the old order. Mother is here as well. There is a hole in the wall of my very fine chambers, and she speaks to me through it. She tells me that they mean to sap my life and give it to father. She tells me this has already happened to seven of my brothers, those who I thought my ancestors. I think the ritual has already begun. I have strange dreams in which I lie on a dais. Dais? Dais. 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 On a dais underneath the stars and feel myself wither inside my own body. My hands do not look like my own. I think the mystics are erasing my memories. I fear I will die here, and this record will go to the grave with me. But in case it does not, I must record all that I observe of the priest and this ritual. And there follows a brief description of the uh, ritual. It's just fragments of what he can remember. But he remembers lying in a very black place. It seemed like an obsidian room of some kind on a dais. Dais? Dais. Dais. On a dais, on a dais. Surrounded by uh, torches and very specifically a series of diamonds around him. There was chanting, and it seems that there was some kind of energy moving through the stone around him. There's more. He kept a whole journal while he was on Sarawar. He has it with him. What do you make of it? This is... this is grim. <laughs> some of the grimmest I've ever heard. And you're... you're sure this is real? I got it straight from the crown prince himself. Uh, and it confirms, and she nods to Salima what uh, you've told me already. No offense, I just want outside verification. None taken. What do you make of it in terms of the king? What abilities would he gain from this? Dimitri, thanks for a second. You can roll Arcana. I was gonna say, yes. <laughs> thanks for a second, but rolls a d20. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's a 22. Uh, it sounds like the king is a lish and a very powerful one who requires vast amounts of energy to uh, replenish his life. Um, The longer that he goes without that replenishment, the weaker he would become. So if he hasn't drained either of his sons, then he would be weakest right now. Wow. (laughs) Um, Isaiah, I mean, Salima. Your majesty? I didn't know why you had gone on this crazy adventure. Until now. Neither did I. (laughs) (laughs) If this is true, this is... I've only ever read about this sort of practice, this sort of magic, in very old, forbidden books. And if this is true, this is unthinkable that this would be going on. Can he be killed? Well, we have... Don't we have two of... His kids here with us? Yeah. If he hasn't, for lack of a better word, fed in a while, then yes, I would say he would be at least weakened. Good. But that means we have to act fast before he feeds on the girl. She turns to Salima and she says, I have a bit of a problem with personnel at the moment. You might have noticed... About half of them ended up in the sea. A quarter ended up in the sea. Half that remain are currently under the persuasion of my quartermaster, Fato. I have half the votes, more than half, not enough to sail within two days. I need more. I've done everything that I can, but there's someone who could do more. Um... And she uh, jerks her chin out the window. Down in the square of Krishnar, you see Sulkin Rai Kashka and Elham Dolaran. 
crossing the square. Elohim, of course, is Carmela right now. Yes. Deadeye nods to her and says, That one holds a lot of respect around here. Meanwhile, she slips on a puddle of black ice. <laughs> <laughs> Just totally eat shit in the middle of the square. So it probably catches her. Oh, yeah. thank you, dear. Were she to speak on my behalf as Elohim Doloran, that might very well tip the scales. Unfortunately, I don't have any sway over her at the moment. But you do. The promise of pardon gives you leverage. Convince that one you might just have us underway. Yes, I, I think I can make use of this leverage. Good. And bouncing over to Sulkin Rai, um, Carmela, and Kashka, um, you enter into the Woven Steel Emporium. Is there anything can I roll to see if there's anything shiny that catches my eye? Uh, Sulkin sure. Rye. <laughs> Let me let me describe okay. this scene to you guys first. You uh, come into what seems like a small, cramped uh, front office. There are things hanging from the ceiling, things on the walls, things stacked in corners, um, various metal devices, contraptions, some that look kind of dangerous. There's like a half-built cannon that has one end pointed at the door. <laughs> <laughs> seems like bad practice. And a desk at which sits a gnome who is wearing a hanfu, a Chinese-style robe. Beyond that gnome and that desk is a giant, giant back room. And if you look at it, the outside doesn't match the inside. Mm. There's no way that this giant back room fit into the store that you saw, into the building that you saw from the outside. But it does, and it's full of things, of, of cannons, of parts of ships, of weaponry, of necklaces, of um, all sorts of different things. This giant room in the back has platforms that are going up and down. It seems like there are little metallic hands that come out of the platforms, pick up an item and take it down, and then bring it to the front desk to be worked on. This gnome is hunched over, uh, and is uh, working on something as you walk in, is uh, uh, working on a, a gauntlet, it looks like. Okay. And I roll, oh, 15. 15. Um, the gauntlet uh, in, in the gnome's hands actually mm -hmm. is quite beautiful. There's also a shield on the wall um, that is very shiny. Mm. Oh, and also a set of armor to the other side that is mirrored. You can actually see yourself, like, it's so shiny that it's mirrored. Carmela would walk up to there, just kind of dust no out of her hair, and pinch her cheeks. <laughs> Leroy um, sidles up next to you and squints at himself. He's like, oh, I need a shave. Yikes. I kind of like the scrub. Really? Oh. He's never shaving again in his life. <laughs> 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 and the gnome behind the desk uh, sits up and he says, Oh, Kashka, how are you? And he hops down from the desk and runs around, and Kashka kneels down and um, very carefully hugs him. Aww. And he's, he comes up to, like, her knee or something. Um, Kashka says, Hello, Waywalk. It is good to see you. I am so happy. You are well? And um, Waywalk says, Oh, I, as good as ever, yes. Oh, and you've brought friends. Uh, oh, oh! Turning around with his, his, his back to everyone and then stomp. Yeah. Stomp. Stomp. And then <laughs> to crane his head down to look. Yeah. Waywalk is just frozen with his little hands and fists and he's like <gasps> goes goes down on a knee. A little oh, tiny God. organic. <gasps> is it is it friendly? He extends a hand. <laughs> oh my oh. Hi. Hi. You're the most beautiful thing I've ever <clears throat> Um Your affection is noted. Are you, wait, are you, are you hooked up to the hive? Have you been disconnected? Uh, you must let me look at your brain. You're, you must let me, let me look at your processing the systems. I have to see everything. Is this a typical way of being introduced? Carmela just shakes her head. The answers to your questions are no, yes, and perhaps. All right. Oh, oh, I, I have to, but you, I, I have to introduce you to Bart. 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 Bart is your warforged. Um. Yeah, sort of. I mean, but you'll see. Bart! And out of a side door comes... 
clunk. And then the door actually shatters <laughs> as this warforged that has obviously been taken apart and put back together comes through the door uh, with one hand on the doorknob. The doorknob is still in its hand. And, uh, Please kill me. <laughs> and it turns its hand, drops the doorknob on the ground. Finger imprints on it. Yeah, yeah the doorknob is totally warped. And Waywalker says, oh, oh, that's the third door this month. Saul, Saul stands up and moves over to Bart and mm-hmm. immediately lowers his head to uh, be face to face. And everyone can hear this whirring noise inside along with some click, 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 click. There's a, a faint, faint reply of like, Click. Saul turns his head back over to Waywalket. What has happened to Bart? Oh, well, um, Bart was, well, he fought with uh, some of the pirates, and I pay the pirates for whatever scrap they bring in. Pardon me for the terminology, but, yeah, he was scrap when they brought him in. Um, If he was shut down, indeed. He was. He was very badly damaged. Um... I've repaired him as best I could, but the main, the main interest, the main interest, and perhaps you will uh, help me with this, is I'm trying to understand what mechanism separated them from the hive mind. The thing in your head. You have to let me examine it. This is, a, this is revolutionary. I can... Saul, so, so, like, <laughs> takes a hesitant back step away from, like, the two foot tall individual. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is at your knee, just, like, no, ready to bo- fully bo- climb. Bo- bo- and Kashka kind of steps forward and, like, reaches down with a hand onto his shoulder and is like, per- perhaps another time. We are unfortunately in a little bit of hurry, but I wanted to introduce you to someone else. This is Elohim Dolaran. Pleasure. Uh... Forgive me, as Carmela? Yeah, I suppose the gig is up and switches to Avery. The gnome Waywalket turns around and blinks up at you and says, Oh, you're... Oh, wow. Hi. And he puts out his hand, sticks up his yeah. hand, <laughs> like way up. And he says, Hi. Um, you've probably heard this a lot around here, but um, I owe you my life. A lot of people around here do. It was... No, no trouble. He's had lots of training from a very affectionate uh, parentage, right? Yeah. Yes. Real good at the mushy-gushy emotional stuff. Elohim uh, does kind of kneel down a bit to shake Waywalket's hand. Uh, Kashka turns to Elohim and says, Waywalket, this one had uh, mentioned wanting to have uh, some healing magic. They are thief and wizard. Thief? Uh, yeah. Mona I am pirate. Waywalker says, "Oh, yes, I'm. 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 I'm sure you're in uh, some kind of situation." Um, are you, and he looks at Kashka. Are you okay? I saw the ship. That looked bad. And Kashka kind of shakes her head and says, "I cannot talk about it right now. It is still in motion." And Waywalker says, "Oh, of course, of course, yeah, secrecy and all that, yeah, yeah." So let me see. Let me think. Um. Oh well, I mean the. Th- thing that I have, it's still kind of in test form, but this, and he picks up the gauntlet that he was working on, and he says, this is beautiful. It's a gauntlet of deviation magic. Thank you. It's so pretty, but it's also super functional. Is it dangerous? Uh, A sword is dangerous. Anything can be dangerous. A rock can be dangerous if it's thrown hard enough. And Leroy's like, yeah, I can. I'm good at that. <laughs> Waywalket says, this gauntlet can allow you to uh, channel energy of a different type than you normally would. It does tend to alter the world around you a little bit. You're hmm. bending reality. Just a little. Just enough. Oh, Dimitri's interested. <laughs> <laughs> You're not there. No, uh, I'm not. <laughs> do you get just one other type of magic and channel? Or is it like a magic um, converter? I mean, if you start I mean, doing too many things, you, you grow two heads or something like that. Not that that'll happen very often. <laughs> you know, just sometimes. No, all right. Yeah, but, but if you stick to one, if you stick to just like healing magic, you should be fine. 
Here, here, give me your arm. Left or right? Uh, whichever. Left. All right. And he puts it on and it immediately clasps around your arm. Um, ah! I probably should have asked the price before I tried it on. Oh, no, you're, you're Elohim Dolaran. It's free. Here, no, come on, come outside, come outside. Okay, you, okay. You, you're gonna, uh, you gotta try this thing out. I'm, I'm actually super excited to see you try it out. I've only done it myself a few times, so okay. um, let's, uh, let's see what this baby can do. And he goes outside and he says, now, um, how about something a little bit, you know, mm, less destructive? Well, you're, you're going for healing magic, so it's probably fair. How about light? Try casting okay. the spell light. I do that. I'd have to roll, right? You cast the spell light, yes. and uh, the gray world of Krishna around you suddenly brightens significantly. Ooh. The whole street lights up with this beautiful, glowing white light, and people turn their heads. And if people didn't know that Elhim Dolaran is here, a bunch of people turn down the street and see. And if people didn't see that a Warforged was here, then they see it now. <laughs> There's a lot of confusion of, of people leaning out of windows and like looking down the street at this very strange sight of Elham Dolaran standing next to a warforged and trying on some kind of bizarre gauntlet the likes of which the world has never seen before. A random passerby that's like fairly close Saul like looks over at and just trying to emote similar to, to organics he's seen. Uh, just loosens up his jaw so it's just kind of dangling, almost like a smile, and lifts up his hands and starts waving it back and forth all lazy, like, clink, 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 clink. Oh no. <laughs> this is the gauntlet of deviation yes. magic. I'm super excited about this. Uh, you wanted some kind of healing magic, so here we go. Arcane trickster, but instead of arcane trickster, it's arcane physiker. So we have homebrewed it and combined it with Cards Against Humanity because you are casting cleric spells mm -hmm. as an arcane physiker. You can do a lot of those same things and we're gonna have the homebrew um, page up on the website. But uh, essentially the magic that you use comes with a price. Every time you use a cleric spell, you have certain reality bending consequences that will be determined by Cards Against Humanity. All creatures within a 10-foot radius of you will then have to roll constitution. Lowest gets the card, and it is applied to them in interesting ways. For instance, right now, doing the right thing is the card that is drawn. And I'm going to just say that it is applied to Elohim. Um, so for the next, um, let's see. I say for like the next light lasts an hour. Light lasts an hour. For the next hour, you are lawful good. Oh, fudge muffins. <laughs> hey. Excellent. You feel this, this surge of righteousness fill you. You don't know where it comes from. And from the outside, nobody can tell that anything uh. has changed. But inside, you are lawful good. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Salima That's a and to the left and up from yeah. where I usually sit. Yeah, Salima and Dimitri, you very clearly see this white light filling the street. Do you head in that direction? Oh, my eyes! <laughs> <laughs> like, my human did, eyes. A dark corner. <laughs> <laughs> I presume you guys are uh, coming over and joining. Elohim's just tell you what. Let's follow this super bright light. <laughs> trash can. <laughs> You're picking up litter in the recycling yeah. bin. Oh. No, it was a candy wrapper. It's not recyclable. Aww. Mm. <laughs> Waywalket is delighted. He's beside himself with this. And he says, um, Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Oh, that looks like it. And it doesn't seem to have had any side effects that I can see. Everybody count your fingers. Uh, please, you must let me compensate you in some way. Oh, no, 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 no. It's, I, it's only what I owe you. A life is not a price. <laughs> Leroy kind of looks at you sideways, like, <laughs> huh? Werewolf uh, walks forward and um, takes your hand, and he says, It would be my honor if you would take this with you and use it to heal. I will do so, and I will tell people of your amazing creations and the good that they are doing. Oh, <laughs> thanks, thanks. Speaking of which, does does anybody else need anything? Oh, oh, hi, hi, guys. And he waves to Dimitri and Sleeva. Are you, are you coming into the shop? 
Come in, come in, everybody, so, everybody so, inside. Hello. Yeah, hi, <laughs> hi, I'm Way Wacket. Nice to meet you. To meet three. Nice. Um, come in, come in, everybody inside. The only time he has an accent is when he says his name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, I just like see the fur coat. And yeah. The big yeah. eyebrows. Yeah. But yeah, Way Walk, it pulls you all inside and says, um, and now that we're out of the cold, does anybody need anything else? I hear from Kashka, and I'm not sh- I know, I know, it's to be kept quiet, but you're um, on your way out someplace. Do you need any anything? Anybody need anything? Uh, if you're going on a long journey, I do have sending stones. You can send messages long distance. Uh, or I have, oh, young man, I, I see that you're uh, eyeing that shield on the wall there. And Leroy kind of jolts guiltily, and he says, Uh, yeah, yeah, I, uh, how, how much is it? Oh, this is a, a shield of shield. Besides just being a shield, which is fantastic, don't get me wrong, it can actually cast shield, the spell, once per day. Wow, the- shield, shield. Yeah, a shield of shield. Exactly. All right? And it, uh, Waywalk, it makes finger guns at you. Ah! It, it yeah. shields you with its shield that it produces from the shield. Well, you can cast it on somebody else. Oh. Or on yourself. And you know. if you cast the shield to someone, that it shall shield them while also they can cast shield on you. <laughs> Yo, dog, I heard you like shield, so I got a shield on your shield. Hey, and Waywalk, it gets a distant look in his eye and says, that's actually a really good idea. <laughs> Anyways, um, but yeah, it's uh, a thousand gold if you're interested, young man. And Leroy's eyes kind of widen and he discreetly is like counting coins and he's kind of wincing a little bit. Oh, sweetie, you uh? saved my life earlier. I did? When a certain someone cast Gust of Wind and we fell out of the rigging. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I did. I mean, oh, please. A life doesn't have a price, right? <laughs> no, but your charming good looks. But by a little bit of favor. Okay. That wasn't very lawful good of me. <laughs> it's residual. <laughs> like lawful horny. <laughs> hey, I'm a force of good. Doesn't mean I can't get some. Leroy drops a little bit of coin and is just, again, not beat red because he's pretty oh. dark skinned, but he's very he's flushed. I feel bad for doing this all the time. <laughs> and he's like, oh, okay, all right, I'll, I'll only cast shield on you. Oh. No offense to anybody else, no offense, but you look like you've got a lot of armor. He points at Sulk and Rai. This one is the shield. <laughs> See, that was such intensity. And Leo was just like, oh, okay, all right. Um, you need to work on your first person pronouns there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Waywalk, it sounds, oh, um, sounds good to me. So yeah, uh, shield for 1,000 gold pieces. Now, I do, again, have these sending stones for um, 2,000 gold. <coughs> I'm pretty sure I don't have anywhere near that amount of money. <laughs> Do you say that in character? Yes. <laughs> I don't have that amount. I mean, it's not as though we need it. You have your little familiar that's so handy. True, but still, it would work better than pigeons. If you need anything else, there's also um, potions in town. Um, mm. The Apothecary by Jojo. If you go early enough in the day, you should be better. That, that would be better. What makes you say that? Uh, I don't know. Jojo likes to drink a little bit mm. in the afternoons. I mean, you know, a lot of people around here do. It keeps you warm or gives you the sensation of being warm. It doesn't it actually keep you warm. But yeah, I, Jojo's uh, apothecary is down the street. All right. Yeah. That seems worth checking out. Okay. Um, and yeah, if uh, any, anybody else, I've got the mirror armor, I've got the um, robe of useful items, and he kind of spreads <laughs> his arms and he says, if you ever uh, want to buy one of these puppies, you'll always have something useful. Of course, he's only like two feet tall, so his <laughs> robe is like doll-sized. <laughs> um, I can't wear this. <laughs> yeah, and he actually, this actually, uh, it actually adjusts to uh, your size. So, uh, you know, you wouldn't just like wear it as a hoodie or something like that. You, know? <laughs> you could even wear it. And he just is a silken rye. It would fit you. That's impressive. Yeah. Right? And he finger guns at you too. Would this one also be able to wear it as a hoodie as you proclaim? I mean, and he blinks down at the rope. It's not really cut that way. The design of it stays the same size. You just It just gets bigger. Saul doesn't say anything, but his, his head turns down. In sadness. <laughs> and he says, wow, are you experiencing emotions? 
That's some next level shit, bro. It is difficult Language. to comprehend. Listen, if you're having like emotions and stuff, then if you want to let me have a look at you sometime, you can have whatever you want in the store. I mean, within certain boundaries, like, you know, just uh, the front room. That feels like it would be very uncomfortable. It's typically a pretty invasive procedure. It, it is not normal for organics to look inside each other's skull cavities. <laughs> not if you like them. And Waywalk it says, uh, well, the offer stands. If ever um, you uh, you want to have me crack that puppy open, you know, I have a look inside. That is not selling this one on the concept. You are heading out of the Woven Silk Emporium. It's still light outside, and so you kind of have to squint your eyes a little bit. And you start to- really talk to the Earl about filling in some of these potholes. (laughs) (laughs) Again, Leroy kind of looks at Are you feeling okay, Avery? Never better. I feel wonderful. I feel good. Okay. He's not going to figure this out. (laughs) Yeah, no. As you are heading down the street in a group with Kashka uh, and Leroy, Avery, you feel a hand at your elbow. And you are pulled, not violently, but firmly, sideways into a steaming noodle shop. The person pulling you is Fato. Do I have time to grab Leroy? (laughs) She is basically just pulling you a little bit sideways and says, Hi, we need to talk. Oh, family reunions are my favorite. Do we all notice this? Unless you have your head on the swivel, your passive perception. What's your passive perception? Yeah, so basically just no. 10 plus perception. So 12. So 12. Mine's 13. Uh, 14. No, <laughs> sorry, 13. 13. Your head literally is on the swivel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you would probably notice. Fato sees you guys looking and it's just like, family conversation. Just going to keep them for a second. If I wasn't lawful good, I would be saying, kill me now. <laughs> yeah. Just a quick the family family convo, you know. Oh, shit, I'm lawful good. You're lawful yeah. good. <sighs> yeah. Hey, cousin, I love you. How's it going? <laughs> lawful good. I'm lying would be wrong. Fato is saying to the rest of you, their dad is in town. Uh, we got a lot of stuff to hash out real fast. Okay? Mm. Just a minute. And pulls Avery deeper into what you realize is a ramen shop. Uh-uh. It seems like they're just opening, um, so there uh, aren't any customers. And she uh, pulls you into the back of the shop. In the back of the shop is Dwarf, the dwarf that was stalking around behind her while she was uh, healing the ship, and a and another elf that uh, seems nervous and has uh, their head on a swivel. Do I know this elf? It's one of the drow. Fato lets you go and leans against the wall and says, Okay. So... I just wanted to make very clear a few things. First off, I understand that you have a personal connection, perhaps, to all of this by way of your father. I don't know exactly how much you like him or dislike him. I personally hate my own, and I wouldn't blame you if you felt the same about your own. We have our differences, but... I'll leave it there. That's fine. I'm not here actually to talk about family. That was a little lie. Sorry oh, about that. Is so bad. I know. I really work on that. I know. You know who else lies? The captain. She told me that she could trust me. That I could trust her. That we were both in this for ourselves, but that we had a shared interest. That we were invested in in each other. That's what she said. She could have been protecting you. (laughs) I just want to make clear to you that you have some influence and what you decide to say or do may influence the crew and other people maybe in Krishnar. I want you to be aware of your power and influence in this situation. It is definitely something that has been brought to my attention since we came ashore. Good. And, well, you deserve it. You've done a lot for these people. They should show a little bit of appreciation to you. I didn't do it for them, though. And she leans forward. She says, I know. I know. Can I roll to see how close to the end of the hour I am? (laughs) Nope. You're still in the hour. (laughs) And she says, it doesn't matter. You know why? 
I don't care. I'm in this for myself. I appreciate your honesty. That's the difference. I will always tell you that I am in this for myself. I have no hidden agendas. I have no lies. Deadeye exchanges letters via pigeon. Plans deceptions for years and years and years. I mean, in her defense, the plans have been underway for a good amount of time before you got involved. That's what you think. I was there with her from almost the beginning and the entire time, the entire time, she was lying to me. She was using me and like real emotion starts to bubble up in her. I was her friend. She called me her friend. I thought that I had her trust. I gave her everything that I... The captain lies. I don't. You can choose how you want to spend your time and where your loyalties lie. And then she turns and walks out. What have the dwarf and the drow been doing this whole time? Uh, not much. Keeping watch on the doors. Okay. I'm guessing they follow after her? Yeah. Did the others... Did you proceed on to Jojo's apothecary, or did you wait outside? I think we're just gonna wait outside for a minute. Okay. You see... cold, shivering. (laughs) Yeah, you see Fato, a dwarf, and a drow uh, walk out. Um, The drow very hurriedly, like, pulls a hood over... Uh, their face to shield from the light. Um, it's very dim light, so they can kind of go outside uh, in it. Fato looks at the others and then just kind of saunters away uh, down towards um, the bay. And then uh, Elohim, uh, or Avery, comes back out. Well, that was awkward. <laughs> Have you been enlightened? Can we go? It's, it's cold out here. Uh, yes, let's go check out the apothecary. Yes, let's get some more warm where you and I can chat. Oh, I'm just so popular today, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's putting you into awkward situations and conversations today. As long as my father doesn't show up, I'll call it a good day. <laughs> Not him. <laughs> Not him. <laughs> no, no. Not right now. <laughs> it is strange to this one. Many congregate to you, and yet, would this not be easier with a hive mind? I like being able to keep some things to myself. What is this concept? People who know me know what I've done, what I've been through, theoretically. But it's nice not having to remember that every time someone else remembers. That is to say, all organics experience this quiet? It's only one voice clamoring. Saul turns his head and just stares off for a little bit. Like, what the fuck? (laughs) Down the street, there is a a slightly quirky-looking abode. Again, there isn't a whole lot of glamour or design to these houses, but uh, this one seems to have, like, some tinkly lights outside and some floral curtains hanging in the uh, windows and a sign outside that says Apothecary in uh, fancy lettering. You enter into the apothecary. There is the smell of incense in the air. Um, It's very homey uh, inside and a small bell tinkles uh, as you come in. And then there are some more wind chimes that seem to be attached to the ceiling that tinkle uh, as well in greeting. Potion bottles lining all of the shelves. Some are carefully labeled, others are not. This seems to be a cluttered workstation. And you stand there in the entryway for a moment, perhaps looking around. And then with a slide, a half-orc dressed in Bermuda shorts and a a silk green robe that is hanging wide open and holding a glass of uh, something that smells very strong slides into the room and says, Hello! How can I help you today? I am Jojo! And uh, they're also wearing a scarf which they flip over their shoulder and kind of shuffle forward to you. They're wearing um, snowshoes. And it seems like they were just like out back doing something and they kind of kick the snowshoes off with a shinny and uh, come across the room and say, What can I get for you today? Are you here for something? Are you here to visit? Because I will visit. <laughs> I feel like you're being propositioned by a half-working for me to 
You are. You are. You are. No, <laughs> you legitimately are. One hundred percent. That is what ha- is happening. I'm Listen, really surprised that you're like. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're surprised by this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you of all people. <laughs> yeah. Everyone is being propositioned. This half orc leans over to Dimitri and kind of uh, tickles uh, your beard a little bit and says, "Yeah." Oh, would you like uh, some lotion in here? It'll make you smell very good. Yeah? It's pretty low on my list of priorities, but thank you. Oh, this is too bad. <laughs> you! They uh, kind of sidle over to Salima, uh, start to reach out towards her scarves a little bit. She dodges uh, instinctively. Oh, uh, he's fine, he's fine, he's... Are, are you mystic? <gasps> Do not look in my mind! <laughs> Do not look in mind! I have some experience there, but you don't have anything to fear. Especially oh. if you have any useful potions. I have potions! Oh, potions! You come to Jojo for potions, yes. We have potions. And uh, <laughs> imagine... they flip their ponytail. When Jojo tries to, like, stroke you, it's like when you try and pet a cat, the, cat, yep. the entire yep. cat just kind of bends out of the way. <laughs> yes, the cat dawn. And the uh, Jojo moonwalks backwards uh, <laughs> with surprising effectiveness, considering how intoxicated they are. I want to be Jojo when I grow up. <laughs> and gestures at the room around them and says, Yes, I have all of the potions. I have potions of greater healing. I have potions of growth. Mm. <laughs> I have potions of sharpness. Oh, naughty, naughty. I feel like Elohim is just standing there right now. And like their brain is just melting between like themselves and the lawful good override. <laughs> <laughs> Jojo sidles over to Leroy and says, um, we have potions of never prone. Mm. Elohim just like the little emoji <laughs> with the nuclear cloud coming out of the brain. Uh, and just kind of like slides over between them. I'm like, oh, did I hear you say something about greater healing? I do. I do have greater healing. Yes, yes. He's um, 175 gold. Your Royal Highness, if we're going to undertake a hazardous journey, do you think that uh, the crown might be willing to. I'm, I'm broke. <laughs> I feel that we should all be outfitted with at least one of those each. Thank you. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, big spinder. You want gift wrap? I have pretty gift wrap. Yes, yes, yes. I would prefer you save your resources and perhaps in exchange offer us a discount. For you, darling, no. <laughs> Imagining you like actually going to Jojo's mind and what you would find in there. Oh <laughs> no! Jojo takes some time and uh, gathering up your um, potions of greater healing, so you do have some time to uh, stand idly in the lobby. I'm gonna look around and see if anything catches my eye. Uh, about that attention oh. of yours. This is somewhere warm, isn't it? It is. I think you've come to see how much influence you have on this island. It's kind of alarming. But you are enjoying it, aren't you? Not while I'm waffled that I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> influence isn't necessarily about manipulation. It's about helping them see ways to move forward together. I need you to understand the situation that you, you stand in right now. I just feel like I've been doing a lot of understanding today. Good, that's excellent. That means that you're ready to recognize the fact that Deadeye needs your assistance, and so do I. And so does the entirety of Kisawar. You have the unbelievable ability, with just a few smiles and shaken hands, to put into motion a plan that will change society for centuries and put the end on a terrible, terrible chapter. There's just so much good you can do. So much good. Zoom in on your yes. So much good. As I'm sure you're aware, 
Dead Eye's crew is somewhat divided. Mm. And notice. Also, maybe not exactly appropriate of the term, uh, decimated. We're going to need not only the backing of the existing crew, but we will likely also need additional members. How much longer do I have at this hour? (laughs) (laughs) What a lawful good. Leroy leans forward and he says, Look, I I don't understand what's going on. There's like, there's a little girl, right? There's My a li- daughter. Your daughter. Like, there's a little girl that needs to be rescued. And he kind of looks at Elham and he says, I mean, pardon me, but that seems like a no-brainer. You would be able to recognize one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Elham just kind of like puts their hands on either side of Leroy's face, just very gently. It's like, thank you. See? The truth. Clearly we have to go rescue this girl. And in order to do that, we need a ship that's intact. And, and that well means a whole crew. with reliable people. Yes. Out to do good in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Just, like, stares off into the distance. <laughs> <laughs> with, like, a clenched fist yes. and a clenched jaw. <laughs> <laughs> to put a truly lawful government into place. Mm. One that's not based on lies and death. I'll, I'll let you worry about that part. <laughs> um, so you get your uh, potions of greater healing from Jojo, who says... Oh, yes, my darlings, have some fun out there in the world. But come back whenever you need Jojo. <laughs> and they blow kisses to all of you. Oh, my God. So at that point, I think Salima, sensing the moment has come, ushers... Oh, yes. <laughs> Probably marches all out of the building. <laughs> Down to the shore. It seems like there's a lot of people milling about. Um, the crew of the Red Dawn, obviously, people are arguing with each other. People are debating very heavily. Uh, it's basically just a, a big congregation, both on the shore and uh, just above in the front street. And there are people that are arguing very heatedly, people that are just kind of milling about with their ha- arms crossed, watching the entire thing. Deadeye is there. Um, She seems to be standing against a a railing of the uh, front of the street. Randall is already standing right next to Deadeye. Kashka notably goes over and uh, stands next to Deadeye with her arms crossed. And several other people are standing there as well. But when Kashka moves that direction, several people, mostly half-orcs, move in uh, that direction. It seems like the way that people vote is by going and standing next to the person that they are voting for. And several people turn around and look over at all of you. Note uh, Sulkin Rai, the Warforged, with some um, wariness lingering. Dimitri with some confusion. Salima with a lot of apprehension. People have figured out who the hell she is, but they mostly look at Elohim Dolaran. How much longer do I have in this hour? Make a very short fucking speech. Metal hand pats you on the back. I just like, Paul. <laughs> okay. So uh, we walk up to the group, we see people standing where they vote, mm. and Elohim is going to go stand by Deadeye and look over at Fako and say, Sweetie, your family. I appreciate you on what you're trying to do. But this ship is on a mission that has been in the works longer than most of you have probably been a part of this crew. And if you disagree with how it's being run, I'm sorry for how she used you. But at this point, there is an eight-year-old girl that needs rescuing. And this captain and this ship are in the best position to do something about that. Such a heartfelt speech and so lawful good that people in the audience that probably weren't on Deadeye's side up until now are kind of awkwardly rethinking their whole lives and shifting (laughs) over in that direction. It is a two-thirds majority. And Fato sees this. Her group closes around her quite tightly. She walks up to Deadeye and she says, All right, you've got the ship. Whatever. I'll find a different one. And I'll see you probably on the other end of a cannon sometime soon. And Deadeye, facing her, um, says nothing. But uh, Fato does offer her hand to Kashka, and Kashka takes it and nods to her. And then Fato turns and starts to walk away. Her group starts to follow after her. And then one of them makes a movement. A very fast, quick movement that none of you see until it's over. The dwarf that had been following Fato around all day 
pulls a dagger and stabs Deadeye. What? Directly in the heart. And Deadeye hits the ground. Immediate. Unconscious. I throw a potion of greater healing at her. <laughs> no, 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 no. What a dirtbag. <laughs> You're all going to roll initiative. Here ends episode 11 of Dungeons Against Humanity. The only card drawn this episode was Doing the Right Thing. Music featured includes a surfer medley by Riff Music Pony, Harpsichord Anyone by James Ulthorpe, Bach Counterfuge by Seeming Lee, Mountain Village by Alex Chorney, and others. For full listings, check out our SoundCloud page. If you like what you heard, mention us on social media under the hashtag DaPodcast, that's D-A-H podcast, and please don't forget to rate us on iTunes or wherever you listen. Just a reminder that we're going to have a live event next week on Sunday the 13th at Guardian Games in Portland, Oregon. We'll be doing a world-building event in which I show people how to use Cards Against Humanity in order to build their own D&D setting. For more information, check out our website at dungeonsagainsthumanity.net. Next episode will be up in two weeks, so see you then. Bye.